I'm going to have to stop in a minute and get these waterproof trousers off. It's absolutely roast. I'm melting now. It's just spitting with rain occasionally. But if you look over here, you'll see the end of the Larry Gru, where it actually finishes and comes out of the mountains. So that's where I'm heading, and I'm going to try and do the summits either side, more or less. But they're just shrouded in cloud. So hopefully as the temperature increases, then you know, and the sun gets out a bit higher, hopefully it's going to clear up and be a cracking day. Right, time for a bit of highland dancing. Look at these waterproofs off. Well, I was taking the scenic route. I was basically, I had my head down and just focused on the walk and I wasn't really paying attention to the route. So I ended up stuck in this little bit of a bee in the river. I need to get across that side to get up to the Munro. I knew there was a bridge and it's further ahead, but I should have been staying on the right hand side here. So luckily I can get across here and hopefully back on the track and onto the bridge. having a breather and assess what I'm going to do. After a tiring ascent, I at last reached Cairn of Aim, meaning the Cairn of the Big Rounded Hill, with an altitude of 1,037 metres. As I was heading along there, you can see Gerberbothy down below and the path heading up towards the Devil's Point. The summit ridge path is fairly straightforward, but one section it does narrow significantly, so care should be taken, especially in poor visibility or high wind. Right, I think I've spotted a route at the end of this Munro. Bingo! I can actually see a little locking down there, so a little pond. I'm actually swithering about camping over there and then do the Munros tomorrow. Uh, head down and have a look at it. But the main thing is, I need water. There's a few wee ponds here. So I'm going to refuel or restock up, should I say, on the water because I'm absolutely parched. It's handy to use a something like a Lucozade bottle for capturing the water rather than trying to put it in that directly into the you know those squeezy pouches. So that should be enough to keep me going for a little while. Just need to filter it. Cloud rolling across. Right. What a time. Got a midget right in my ear. I think my bloody hero. The path now starts to steepen as it heads up the western flank of Ben McDewey. And climbing this face is very hard going after an already long day, and you should really ensure that you're fit enough before considering taking on such a route. Right. Just come up that boulder field there and it's an absolute peach. <laughs> oh, struggling. Uh, so I'm going to do my second one of the day. It's about five o'clock, so I'm pushing it for time before the light starts to fade. 
So I'm actually going to walk back down the Munro because it heads towards the the Bothy that I was at at the start down to the basically where I started from. So if I can get a bit lower down or find somewhere to camp, then I'll do a summit camp and rest up for the night. So get up to the top of here. Through the thickening cloud I eventually reached Ron Rea, which is not actually a Munro, but a subsidiary top to Ben McDewey and stands at 1113 metres. But with poor visibility and no chance of a starry night or a mystical sunset over the tops, I decided against heading to Loch Echen. So instead I head lower down to try and find somewhere fairly flat and comfortable to camp for the night. Morning. It's seven o'clock, and I managed to get pitched down at Bob Scott's Bothy quite late last night. I think it was about half past nine when I got the tent up, and you know it was back at ten by the time I had something to eat. So that was a long trip, a long walk. Now on the way down, there wasn't anywhere really suitable for pitching the tent. On the summit I was on, it was just a boulder field and rocky and I thought coming down there might be somewhere but it was just uh, marshy and wet with all the runoff from the rain. So I just headed back to Bob Scott's Bothy and yeah, camped outside of there. Uh, socks are still wet. God. I always bring some dry socks. Oh god, they're cold. So that's it folks, another little trip done, a couple of my nose bagged and I really enjoyed it. It was a long day, I set off yesterday about 9 o'clock and finished about 9 o'clock. So 12 hour stint, but remember that's me stopping and starting for filming and had a bit of a brain fart and uh, what route I was going to take, so that didn't help. So I did get down really late in the dark, so glad I had the head torch to get things set up and the tent pitched. On the way out, come across more rubbish, somebody had a packed lunch along the side along there. Just left everything at the side of the, on the track. So, yeah, gets on my tits. But I'll take that out and bin it. But on a good note, I found somebody's electrical device. So, I'll have a look on the, the walking forums and see if anybody's lost what I have found and hopefully return it to them. So on that note I'm going to get this rubbish, get my gear together and head home. So until the next time, take care.